It was great to be here. I'm going to give an introduction to the topic and to you because they're both extraordinary. This is the second time you've come on our show, and people don't realize that you are one of the original founders and members and inspirers of the Anonymous Patriot Conclave. So when we say there's Conclave members, folks, I'm going to tell you a little bit about one of our Conclave members, but he's a very special Conclave member. He's the executive editor of State of the Nation and many other sites. I can't enumerate all of them for you, but a lot. And he is basically a leader of a whole group of people that have since the beginning been the citizen journalist in the alternative news out on the internet. And so we came across State of the Nation and read it long before we ever got the opportunity to chat with Michael Thomas. Today, we are going to ask him to solve for us, or at least enlighten us, about one of the biggest concerns that we have seen, not only with this election going on, but the timing of the fire apocalypse in California and the way that that is happening and the exact methodology has puzzled us so much that we are all basically worried and terrified that this new weapon that has been created could be used anywhere. It's being used amongst uh, wildfires, but that's those wildfires are being set, actually, as we now know. But that isn't the point. The point is this new weapon can be used anywhere, anytime. And we need to wake up, folks, because if we're not going to notice a fire apocalypse in California, then I don't think that we're going to notice anything. And so if we don't wake up on this and the election fraud that's happening right now, I think people are going to continue to sleep like Rip Van Winkle. And that's very sad. And one of the people who has been waking people up for, I don't know, decades is Michael Thomas. So Michael, would you tell us about this fire apocalypse that's going on in California and, and its connection to the elections? Well, let's uh, let's be clear, as you point out, uh, Douglas, the timing of this is not coincidental. All perfectly timed. This fire apocalypse was fabricated to do many things, but one thing especially, and that is to divert the attention of the American people. This is in California, down the road from Hollywood, down the road from Silicon Valley. What better way to distract the American people than to blow this up? I mean, blow it up big time is what they've done. So, it's obvious, I think, to all of us that this, this is really a ruse. Not, it's not a ruse. It's real. It's very real. But it, is, it, was, it was intentionally manufactured to distract the attention of the American people from the, what, is, what will perhaps arguably at this point, but after the fact, after the, after the investigations are, are completed, it will probably be the most... Um, Extensive, extensive elected election theft in U.S. history. That's my prognosis, anyway. It's, they've already done the stealing. They're still doing the stealing in Florida. But what they did nationwide, and very little is known yet. We've only seen the tip of the tip of the iceberg. But when it's all come out in the wash, we will be privy to the greatest election theft in American history. There, there's no question about that. Okay, so... They knew they were going to do it. They did it, and they knew they had to dis dis distract us. They're distracting us with the greatest show on earth in California. This is where they do the dramas, the melodramas, the massive dramas, to really divert our, our attention. And they have to divert it, because if we got into the nuts and bolts of how they stole this election, they know that the body politic would demand immediate reformation of the American election system, and that would completely eliminate their uh, plan for stealing the 2020 POTUS election, which is what they're going to do unless we stop them. So let's get back to California. Well, you know, um, California's always had wildfire seasons. We all know that. And they come and go. They ebb and flow. Some years real bad, some years not so bad. Over 30, 40, 50 years, forever, the Santa Ana winds. Who doesn't know about the Santa Ana winds? Well, we've never seen whole subdivisions go up in smoke like they have in the past three, four, five years. We've never seen people caught unaware where whole communities are literally destroyed in a few hours. That's never happened before. Now, so you have to look at what, what are they doing? What's being done now, right now, and what has been done over the past three, four, five years 
to create a conducive environment for these wildfires to both start and spread like wildfire. Something's different. Something's changed. And, in fact, a lot has changed. And uh, I would love to draw your attention to an article that we just posted at State of the Nation. It's a skeleton. It's not even fleshed out yet, but we thought it was so important that we had to get it up there on the Internet. The title of the article is, and this is something that the, the listener wants to pay very, very close attention to, because this is the outline that Douglas and I are going to use today to show you what they're doing in California right now. The title of the article is, subtitle, I should say, of the article is, Atmospheric Aluminum via Chemical Engineering, Weaponized Smart Meters, Directed Energy Weapons, Arsonists Disguised as Firefighters, and Weather Warfare Used to Fabricate a Highly Conducive Environment for Isolated Firestorms to Spread Like Wildfire in Targeted Communities Throughout California. That's a mouthful, but it says it all. If you understand that, you understand what's going on in California today. Now, the title of the post is this. Here's how the globalists and geoengineers conspired to manufacture the apocalyptic California firestorms. That's the post title. So you can imagine, you know, that this plot is very thick and very thorny, and it's only going to get worse until the people of California and the American people in general wake up to what's going on in their backyard, over their heads, in their communities, throughout their cities and towns and villages in all 50 states. This isn't just isolated to California. This is going on everywhere. But California is their laboratory. This is where they perfect their models. This is where they really bring to bear all the different components of this, uh, of these wildfires that have been plaguing other states more and more over the past three, four, five years as well. Before I go on, uh, Douglas, do you have any any uh, question or interjection about my little title there that I just read? Well, I like the title the first time I heard it because it reminded me that the metallic flakes, aluminum, and all the other ones that they are dropping on us when agitated by highly accelerated uh, particle beams, instantaneously burst into flames. I, I forgot that. So that explains a lot. Just the title and, and what you've put in this title shows that this is constructed and we better find out who's doing it. So great. So so the, 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 the foundation of this uh, whether the, the foundation of this uh, California firestorm uh, terrorist event, ongoing terrorist event, by the way, the, 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 the foundation of it is aluminum. And, of course, aluminum is highly flammable. We have just posted a video at State of the Nation that shows just how flammable aluminum is. Okay, watch the video, please, and then you'll see what we're dealing with. Now, how did they do the aluminum? Well, chemical geoengineering over decades. As a kid, my mother brought me to the, our condominium that was up on a hill. This is in the late 70s, people, the late 70s. And she said, look at over there. And I said, what? Look at the sky. I lived in a town that was very overcast, never any sun. And so we, we really watched the sky for when there was sun. We liked the sun and hated the overcast all the time. Well, she said, look at that over there, those streaks. And I said, what's that? She said, oh, they're seeding the clouds. And those were, she was actually pointing out chemtrails. I didn't know what they were then in the late 70s. But my mother was very worldly wise. She taught us everything. And that's why I do what I do. Because she showed me what was going on in the world in a way no mother in America showed their son. So I'm watching chemtrails since 1970, late 70s. So imagine, it's 2018. Can you imagine how much atmospheric aluminum there is just since the 1970s? Remember, aluminum is something that was prior to the industrial age. It's a metal, aluminum oxide in particular, a chemical compound, that's locked up in the surface of the earth. It was never in the atmosphere. It was locked up. 
And so what happened? The coal-powered, the coal-fired furnaces, power plants, started creating coal fly ash, which is a primary, the primary source for aluminum oxide, which is what they use in the chemtrail aerosols. So you've got, you've got massive amounts of aluminum that have now been released into the atmosphere via the chemtrail jets that spray the aerosols around the world, especially in the United States. And so you've got this, this blanket of aluminum that did not exist in the atmosphere, in the oceans, on the land, on your homes, on your cars, on your pets, on your organic gardens. It didn't exist. Well, now it does exist, big time. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that aluminum, by the way, people, it's especially going into our brains. Because the olfactory nerve does not have a true blood brain barrier, blood brain barrier. It's not. It's only six, five or six uh, cells thick, not the eight inches thick that's required for a true uh, blood brain barrier. So when you're breathing this air, chemtrailed air, you're breathing a steady amount of aluminum, and that's why there is such an uptick in all of the major neurological diseases. I'm a health coach, so I coach a lot of baby boomers and beatniks, and their parents who have Alzheimer's, early onset dementia, Parkinson's, sundowner syndrome, and a whole host of other neurological diseases that, that are the direct result of breathing massive amounts of aluminum over decades. And, and of course, that's intensifying in this decade. So with that understanding, we have an environment in California that has been probably the most chemtrailed state on the planet for reasons that we may not have time to go into today, but it's heavily chemtrailed. The geoengineering taking place in those skies is enough to kill anything of aluminum poisoning with alum aluminum poisoning. So that aluminum is everywhere in California. And, of course, the longer it's laid down in the skies, the more that falls on the lands and into the water bodies. Eventually, all of the vegetation becomes coated with it, gets into the water supply, and the root structures start to uptake the aluminum, and it directs it into the plant structure itself. Aluminum is a metal. It's, dry, it's a drying agent, heavy-duty drying agent. So now you've got all of the vegetation in California that's full of aluminum, but like never before. I mean, in human history, in recorded history, in world history, aluminum. It's the real poison, not just for the human brain, but for the plants, for the animals, for the land, for the water bodies. Contributes to the acidification of the water bodies as well. So, okay, so we got aluminum everywhere. Well, yeah, drying, dries everything out. You see California, the forests that are forests all over California that have died are dying. They, they, get, they get blight because the, the dehydration, the mass dehydration of the forest and all the underbrush, the vegetation, it uh, makes it vulnerable to, uh, to burning, <laughs> to, to a lightning strike, to any kind of a grass fire, brush fire, wildfire, forest fire, you name it. That's California. Just aluminum alone. Now, we've only talked about one component of their program, just aluminum. There's 10 other components here. But you get the picture how aluminum, atmospheric aluminum, land-based aluminum, plant structured aluminum, aluminum in the water, just that one component, how that's completely changed the dynamic, the environmental dynamic throughout the entire state of California. That's done. Point number one. Point number two, we see that they have uh, weather warfare. Of course, this is uh, the weather warfare component is a uh, is, is directly related to the chemical geoengineering because they use chemical geoengineering as one of their pillars of their weather modification program. We all know that. But the weather warfare program? I mean, who hasn't watched uh, California become the victim of major weather wars for as long as we can all remember? I mean, drought, deluge, mudslide, wildfire, you name it. It's happening in California. So the point is, 
and there are many videos out there, folks, that very clearly show you the signatures, the irrefutable geoengineering signatures via HARP, a whole variety of frequency-based modalities that are used to ensure that California is either not getting a speck of rain for days, weeks, months, or so that it is a, a victim of massive deluges. So, you know, the, the, uh, all of the hard evidence, I mean hard scientific evidence that's now available on the Internet shows you that the environment in California has been steadily set up via weather modification techniques to create droughts, drought conditions anywhere and everywhere they want to, and they've been doing it as we've all watched them do it. So that's the second pillar of their program, droughting the state, constantly droughting the state. Well, that's not too good for wildfire season, is it? Next, you've got the smart meter. Smart meters are everywhere now. Over the past five years, say, since these fires have really gone on steroids, it's fair to say that smart meters have also been introduced throughout communities all over the state. California is one of those states that whatever happens in the country, they first do it to California. It's the pace setter. you got smart meters popping up in communities all over that state. Wherever there's a smart meter, you've got a potential fire because it's been proven by an ex-PG&E employee that PG&E knew that smart meters had a very high uh, susceptibility to catching fire. But that's not the point. We know that. That's on the Internet. The real point is that they've been weaponized. They have digital signatures that can be trained on by any kind of overhead drone, satellite, airliner that is set up to trigger trigger that smart meter. Now, how is it being triggered? It could be triggered to start on fire. It could be triggered to push a whole house fire into place. It could be triggered in ways that I'm not in, at liberty to talk about right now because it's way beyond the scope of this, of, this, of this interview. But let me just say this. Smart meters are a key cog in this machine. Key cog. And it's why those pictures that you see on our website where you see an entire subdivision wiped out, every house is blown up, literally blown up. The, 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 the surrounding trees, even those right next to the house, are in perfect shape. There's nothing wrong with them. Sidewalks, no scorching. Sure, the streets look like they were just paved. Some vehicles on the, on the street aren't even touched. But the houses, each one has undergone an implosion, literally an implosion. It's, they've been collapsed in themselves, and in some cases, materials, items, household effects have been vaporized, gone. Toilets, tanks, uh, uh, showers, tubs, gone. Okay, this is not a fire. This is a 9-11 type event where they literally vaporize the material. The home is collapsed on itself. There's nothing there in some cases. There's no fire. There's no, there's no black charred wood or concrete blocks it's just a an implosion that collapses the house in and itself and these houses 10 of them 20 of them show up they're just gone obviously not a wildfire folks very sorry to say not a wildfire most important question that the american people can ask themselves today is how are these communities how are these subdivisions these neighborhoods being destroyed if not by wildfire if that question's not asked seriously and answered with a good answer very quickly, then I'm afraid to say that this, this, this American Republic is going to be in trouble. We have to answer this question. And this is the reason why. Because, you know, we're all subjected to a whole host of assaults, a whole host of invasions, chemical invasions, ionizing radiation invasions, electropollution invasions, you name it, particulate invasions of every sort and kind. But most of them we don't know about. And if we do, we can stay away from the fluoride in the water. Just don't drink the water. Stay away from the aspartame and the soft drink. Don't drink the diet drinks. We can stay away from the chemtrails. Don't go outside, or if you do... You, you know, in your home, have all the right, the right equipment like we do that 
neutralizes the aluminum in the other, the barium salts and the other components in those toxic chemtrails. So you can do that. You can either avoid it or protect yourself. Okay? In this case, in the case of, we'll call it uh, uh, firestorm, uh, the deployment of firestorms, or they, these aren't firestorms, we'll call this, we'll call this what? What do we call it, Douglas? Well, you know, the ultimate weapons appear to be directed energy weapons that we haven't even talked about yet. The directed energy weapon in, is introduced into the mix after everything else has been set up. And the directed energy weapon is basically trained on the house, which we believe there are certain homes, there are certain communities that are being wiped out, and we discuss that in our articles, by the way, that these, everything that's being wiped out is being wiped out for a purpose. There are no, there are no random... Well, yes, if a fire, wildfire gets started, that's going to that, that's gonna go its course. We know that you can't stop a, a, an out-of-control wildfire. But where you see these subdivisions just blown apart, that these are blown apart for a reason. Many theories behind that, by the way, but that's a big question. Who got blown apart? Why did they get destroyed? Huge question. If we can answer who or if we can answer why, then we know the who. If we know the who, we know the agenda. So uh, getting back to the other components here, you've got the directed energy weapons, and they can, they can be deployed from a variety of different modalities. Obviously, you've got drones. I mean, drones. Golly, what, what, what can't a drone do in 2018? The level of sophisticated technology that is included in those drones is just mind-boggling. And yes, they can turn them into flamethrowers. So you've got drones. You've got airliners that are flying overhead and helicopters that are also weaponized. They can be used to torch. They can, they can be used to send signals, EMFs. that can be used to deploy uh, directed energy weapons, in particular focused laser beams. So you have a whole variety of, you know, of vehicles from which to deploy this weaponry, airliners helicopters, drones, and you've got low-lying satellites, okay, which also can be used to, to deploy laser weapons. So in all the, most of this is done under cover of night. So under cover of night, this is easy. And if it's not done under cover, cover of night because they're deploying a weapon that can be seen at night, they can get away with this, with this stuff during the day very simply. And, of course, whatever they can't get away with, they always have you know, what we call in the article arsonists who are disguised as firefighters. Okay, there are many instances where these fires, they always say, oh, you know, the campfire. They call it the campfire. How nice. They call it the campfire to mislead the public into believing a little out-of-control campfire burned down the whole city of paradise. Well, no, it wasn't a campfire. It was the things that I'm telling you right now. And by the way, that's just the campfire. How are they going to explain the other 50 fires that have jumped off in California since the end of October? So, but they talked about the campfire, and that was the first one they put out there to just give everyone sort of implant the false meme that these are just little campfires that are out of control and, you know, end up burning, burning down the whole forest. Does that happen? Oh, yeah, it does happen. We know that. Can it happen? Yeah, it, ha it can happen anywhere, anytime. Is that what's happening in California in 2018, in November, back in July, and back during the two fire seasons of 2017, <clears throat> 2016? I don't think so. I think what's happened here is everything that we're outlining here, giving you the components of their firestorm apocalypse. So we just covered arsonist disguised as firefighters. There are other pieces to this. Uh, we just went over, you know, five, six major pillars of their program to create the conducive in circumstances to burn down a good chunk of the state. And so, you know, I think that with this understanding, people can get out of that NIMBY consciousness. You know, we call it in our, in our little conclave here on our side of the fence, we call it NIMBY consciousness at the single most destructive thing in America today is NIMBY consciousness. And it's the NIMBY consciousness that prevents reasonable people from defending themselves, 
from helping others, from doing what they have to do to overturn the sequence of events that is terribly destructive and deadly to our fellow Americans. And I believe that that's why we're here, because of the NIMBY consciousness. Well, guess what? NIMBY consciousness doesn't cut it anymore, because not only can these fires and these directed energy weapon events be, be directed at your neighbor over there in Paradise, California, these events can be directed at you, your family, your home, your car, your business, your city, your community. Look at the pictures, folks. Happen anytime, anywhere. There are no more NIMBYs in California. And so hopefully no one's offended by, I'm not suggesting that our readers are NIMBYs. We probably, your listeners, Douglas, are probably, there's probably not a NIMBY among them. Explain but NIMBY for we, them, Michael. Explain, uh, define NIMBY for them. Well, NIMBY is, in, is not in my backyard. Not in my backyard. In other words, people don't care what's going on as long as it's not in their backyard. That's a NIMBY. And that NIMBY consciousness is what, you know, they, the, the NIMBYs out there, especially in, in California, those NIMBYs have been very purposefully socially engineered over decades to get to the point whereby their attitude is steeped in NIMBY consciousness, where they really don't care. Everything's cool. Just do what you want. Stay away from me. Don't do it to my backyard. I don't care what goes on in your backyard. So that's, that's a real, that took that decades of education, of mind control, of media manipulation to force people into this, this consciousness of NIMBYness where they, they don't, just don't care. But guess what? When your home is blown up like the ones you've seen in these pictures, you're going to care real quickly. By the way, these things, unlike anything else that we can talk about, you know, and, and you know, Douglas, from our websites, watching our websites over the years, there's nothing that, there's no environmental issue, there's no health issue that we haven't touched deeply, as you know. And I, I can just tell you from our analysis is that, is that there's nothing that is, is threatening and is immediate and is dangerous as, the, as this, this covert program to burn down a community in one hour and give nobody notice whereby you see the pictures on our website that were taken, charred skeletons right in the car. They couldn't even figure out what happened. They didn't, they, they didn't, it just came on them so quickly. No one warned them. And, that's, and by the way, there are a lot more deaths that are directly associated with this firestorm, this statewide firestorm. A lot more deaths than you'll ever know. That number that just inches up by the day, you know, 3 and then 10 and then 16 and then 30 and then 48 and then 62 and it stops at 62. No, 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 no. It's not 62 people. 620 people? Probably not 620. 6,200 people? I don't know the exact number, and I don't pretend to know. But I'm going to tell you folks one thing. It's a heck of a lot more than 620 people. Well, and, Michael, and whether it's 60... Last year, how many... Uh, there were all these hundreds of people missing, and then we get no report that any of them were found. Hundreds, hundreds and hundreds from the fires last year, and they weren't. They didn't even compare to the fires this year. And you asked earlier what I would call this. I'd call this an attack, and we have talked about the Internet of Things uh, and Richard C. Walker's Internet of Things uh, aggressive remote control patent. Well, this, those patents show how they can take over your car and wreck it, how they can uh, down a plane by taking it down by the QRS 11 through 14, or the other ways that they can remote control aggressively remote control people, planes, cars, whatever. But at this point, the pictures that you have been posting shows that on a freeway where there's no fire on either side of the freeway, cars bursting into flames with people still in them. That means it happened instantaneously, came out of nowhere. There was no fire. The fire started in your car. So this is not only a NIMBY's in your backyard. This is in the front seat of your car. This is in the passenger seat. This is in your driver's seat of your car. Your car 
can be targeted, attacked, and turned into a bomb of flames. And we see it. And no one can explain it. I don't care. No one that I've talked to except the people who were in the military who were part of weaponization of these things, ex- weaponization of accelerated particle beams, which unfortunately I was part of a team back in the 70s with microwave uh, transmissions that we did weaponize them, uh, used them against Russia, but uh, we didn't, we weren't trying to uh, attack civilian areas. These were Russians who were trying to basically steal our microwave frequencies, so we learned how to turn it into more diffuse frequencies. And so what we're talking about is when Reagan said a thousand points of light, I used to track those when I was in the NSA. Those thousand points of light were accelerated particle beams, what everyone's calling DOOS now, uh, directed energy weapons. But what they can be all kinds of uh, energy weapons. And we saw them used in China against the uh, the largest chemical plant in China after China attacked us again with its cyber warfare. We simply sent an accelerated particle beam. They, you can see it falling from the sky, and that was the, one of the largest explosions of a chemical plant in, the, in history. That was an accelerated particle beam. So we know we have these. But folks, what Michael Thomas is telling you, and he is, when he says it's serious, you need to listen to him. Because at this point, your house could be targeted by your smart meter, and it could be blown up without anybody seeing any laser or anything, because these are also invisible, come from the sky, from a satellite or whatever, the other things he mentioned, other uh, modalities of delivery, and your house would then be um, classified as a, a, a gas explosion. Your house just burnt up, exen- uh, completely incinerated everything, absolutely vaporized materials that cannot be vaporized, like you just mentioned, toilet seats, toilets, or how about the cinder bricks? How about the bricks in the house? How are those evaporated? They are incinerated beyond even what anyone can imagine. We're talking about 4,000 degrees instantaneously and then gone? No, this cannot be a wildfire. And this isn't just about wildfires. That's because they have the wildfire backdrop so they can fly in planes that may have these lasers on them. They can fly in helicopters. They can fly in drones. Nobody sees it. It's at night. These things do not necessarily emit a laser beam that can be seen. These accelerated particle beams can be anywhere from uh, millowaves to beyond the spectrum that we even know. These could be new types of weapons. But the point is, Michael is correct. Nobody's safe. If we can't figure out who's doing this, and we can't point a finger at them and say, these are crimes against humanity, and you need to be indicted, uh, convicted, locked up, and maybe face all kinds of horrible uh, punishments for what's going on because these aren't accidents. Yes, they do clear these areas. They give everybody a chance to get out. It's very nice the way they do that. There's no witnesses. There are no witnesses, and I have seen no videos of phones of people watching their houses burn up in a matter of a couple of minutes so that they literally vaporize. How come there are no videos of vaporizing houses because they clear out the area? It has to be a military and a law enforcement approved exercise. It's it's kind of like a false flag. Get out of your house and then boom, in a matter of minutes, you go back to your house and nothing is there. Nothing, absolutely nothing. But the tree right out your window that you can reach out your window and touch is not scarred. It is not burnt. It is not scorched, nothing. And those are those trees are dry because it's California, and you could light them with a match. But whatever just incinerated your house and caused it to vaporize things that can't be vaporized in temperatures below 5,000 degrees in some cases, this is an attack. And as you said, California is always the area where they do these experiments, and particularly the geoengineering experiments. We could go on all day. And I, I, I appreciate the fact that you aren't giving them all the details that you know about this because it would be overwhelming to people. But what can we do about this, Michael? Is there going to be a solution? Well, it's, a good, it's a good point. So the only, it's a, that, that question, thank you, for, thank you for your input. Very, very, very valuable input, Douglas, and your own background in some of these things. So very good. Um, your question, what do we do? Well, first of all, if you don't know what's being done, you can't respond to it appropriately. And so the purpose of this interview 
is to really acquaint people with what is being done. Even people, even your listeners don't really know what, what we're talking about right now. I didn't, and I left out one of the key pillars of their program, which is the use of the microwave towers to disseminate vectors of certain frequencies that even create a more conducive soup of electropollution that make the atmosphere more combustible. I forgot to, I left that out of my previous discussion with you. So it goes on, it goes on and on. If you look at all these components of how they do this, you'd think, oh my God, what a, what a, what a, an incredible plot that they have engineered here that you couldn't figure out. It's taken us years to figure all this out, to see all the pieces of the puzzle, put them in their proper place, see how they fit. And so you folks are getting the distillation. By the way, this is a first, this is a first time interview. An interview like this that synthesized all the pieces of the puzzle the way that we're doing right now, this has never been done before. There are some great people out there like Deborah, Deborah Tavares who have really come at this from many different angles, but we're putting it together. The article that is being posted today is, an out, is the output of this interview and discussions that I'm having with Douglas and, and Tyler. So uh, the point is this. And by the way, the link, do do? there will be a link in the box below and Betsy and her team will put it there for the article that you're uh, making reference to because everyone needs to see that. That is the article, <laughs> and the one before that, that got me so upset because I'd seen a lot of these pictures, but I hadn't seen all those pictures. And, and every one of those pictures is an enigma, by the way, and you cannot solve it in your brain unless you realize there is a new type of weapon out there and it's being used on us. And, of course, it's the, the, it's the weapon. I'm going to just make this very clear. It's called the weapon of false flag environmental terrorism. That's it. It's the false flag of environmental terrorism. That's what they're using. Because, you know, it's wildfire season. Okay, fires happen. Okay, so everyone is lulled into this complacency that it's just a wildfire. That's how powerful the weapon of false flag. Just because it's a false flag, folks, doesn't mean it didn't happen. It just means that it's being blamed on something other than the true source. That's false. That's what a false flag is. People think false flag, oh, it didn't really happen. Well, sure, these things happen. certainly didn't happen the way that the official narrative is telling them, telling us that it happened. We know that. But, but this is a very, very sophisticated psyop that is bundled under the rubric of false flag environmental terrorism. Let me give you another example. I'm in Florida. We just had a hurricane hit just our, our area and just to the west of us here in North Florida. I'm in Tallahassee. And as many of you may know, a little hurricane came running through here back in October by the name of Hurricane Michael. Hurricane Michael was not a natural hurricane. It may have started out as a natural storm, and then the geoengineers grabbed a hold of it, hijacked it, intensified it, slammed it into the Florida panhandle, basically wiping out whole cities, counties, just like what they did with the firestorms in California. Only in this case, it was a hurricane. Really, it was a geoengineered superstorm is what it was. It was really a hurricane tornado because this thing had winds. It was, uh, it was a Category 2 hurricane in South Georgia. Category Two hurricanes never hit South Georgia or Southern Alabama. That doesn't happen. That's never happened. Okay, so the point is that that's another example of false flag environmental terrorism, where you think it was the hurricane that knocked over your whole town, leveled it, but it wasn't. It was a weather bomb, literally a weather bomb, very, very meticulously engineered by geoengineers, and their globalist handlers to make sure that they wiped out all the red counties in Florida that have now pushed the state of Florida, by the way, into three recounts, also unprecedented in Florida history, unprecedented in American history. The three most important positions in Florida under recount at the same time in the same county, governor, U.S. senator, agriculture commissioner. And, yeah, the ag commissioner is big in Florida because this is an agriculture state point I'm making. How did this happen? False flag environmental terrorism by the name of Hurricane Michael. And we posted articles where even the mainstream media 
published articles specifically pointing to the likelihood that all of these Republican voters who no longer had a voting booth, who no longer had a home, who, no, who had to move out of the state because their town was wiped out, that, that deficit in Republican voting is what pushed these three votes into recount. So that's how powerful false flag environmental terrorism. No one ever thinks to blame, you know, it's easy to blame. You know, when they took down, in 9-11, they took down buildings, they couldn't blame that on the weather. But, you know, though they blamed it on who they blamed it on, but the point is, it's easy. Wildfires, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes that are caused, again, by geoengineering techniques, it's easy to blame these things on the earth, Mother Nature, Mother Earth, the weather. But the, and that, then they love doing these because very few people catch on to the fact that, oh, it wasn't Mother Nature. It was, the, it was a man-made event being hijacked. They, they may have hijacked a natural event, and then they intensified it, like they're doing in California, taking what would have been a regular wildfire season and, and t- uh, intensifying it by, the, uh, by an order of 10. And all of a sudden, you take the campfire and you blow these campfires up into full-blown forest fires. So, this is the, so the, the answer to your question, Douglas, because it's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the reason why we're talking today, that question. That's why we're, that's why we're having this interview. Uh, as you know, I don't do interviews. This is my second interview that I've done, my second interview. I don't do interviews unless there's an absolute and utter necessity to get the word out to the American people. And believe me, if there, is a, if there is an issue that needs to be front and center in every, person's, in every person's living room on Thanksgiving Day, Thanksgiving that they haven't been burned out of their house like the good people of California. So, so true. What do, we do? what do we do here? Well, education is number one. You guys are doing a great job of educating the people, as we try to do with our websites. Once a sufficient number of people are educated, there needs to be a, a critical mass of, of, of advocates, of people who demand answers, who just take this in a way that nobody's taken anything in California. And by the way, you may have seen the open letter that we wrote on our website. We wrote the, you know, people are probably wondering why the heck we did it, but we were very purposeful about that open letter that we wrote to the people of California, specifically to Hollywood and to Silicon Valley. Because those people, are mo- they are movers and shakers. Big movers and shakers. And this is being done in their backyard. Look at all the actors, celebrities, famous people all over the place who've lost homes in Malibu. All over the place. Look at the people in Silicon Valley that are breathing toxic air for days, weeks, maybe months. You, I mean, you live in a multi-million dollar home, you got the best job in the world, you're living in Silicon Valley, and you want to deal with this twice a year for the next 40 years of your life? Is that what they want? <laughs> I don't think so. No. I don't think so. And if they knew what is in, what's coming their way, they would put their foot down. Those people, they don't know. A lot of them are in denial. But if they really knew what they're going to be subjected to for the next 30, 40, 50 years of their life, if they live in California, these people, if they got together, our brothers on the other side of the aisle, we'll call them, they got together with us, and we, we made common cause. We could, tackle this, we could tackle this in one day, because between the power of Hollywood, the power of big tech in Silicon Valley, that's all, you, that's all you would need to just change the tide in literally one moment, one moment of time the tide could be turned against these things. It's a big that order. Is so true. So true. Uh, consciousness the, is the key factor for developing history. I mean, it, it comes down sometimes to just one person who changes history. And when we reach the critical mass of consciousness for these things through education, as you point out, then maybe when um, Kanye West is standing in his house and he says, wait a second, uh, I had a giant metal thing here and it is completely vaporized you know what he did is he hired firefighters to come and protect his neighborhood so 
what's going to happen when some of these very, very powerful people, their homes get burned up and they say, wait a second, this isn't possible. The wildfire never even reached my home. <laughs> Why did my home vaporize? And yes, that, that could be the key factor right there. And I feel so sorry for California because, uh, as you say, throughout our whole life, we've watched them experiment with Californians and the whole state. And it was my, uh, for many years, I went out there every single summer to go up to the Sequoia Forest. I believe it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. And I love California. Uh, but what I've seen happening there is it's a shame. It's just a terrible, terrible shame. So consciousness Yes. What I want to know, though, you pointed out to us a long time ago, because you're so uh, adept at geoengineering information, that these um, radar facilities, these Doppler facilities all throughout America that cover every single inch of America and even out into the oceans, where there are gigantic platforms of these uh, Doppler radar uh, devices that can manipulate uh, and basically do geoengineering, those were owned by international corporations as a matter of fact i traced it back to the rothschilds themselves and they sold them recently to another corporation that i couldn't figure out exactly who it is but what's amazing is people don't understand that a lot of geoengineering isn't even americans doing it it's foreign corporations in our country doing crazy things for instance who owns those satellites that are sending these uh dues these uh directed energy uh uh weapons towards california who's making that order we've heard that um, Richard Bloom, the husband of Diane Feinstein, last year in the Napa Valley burns, that those happened to be uh, parcels of land that he owned. And there were some real scammy things going on, like the people, after their homes were burnt, they uh, took huge loss. Someone came in, him particularly, and bought some of the, uh, a lot of these la- uh, lands, and then they had to build them with ecologically friendly houses and so it cost even more to build them and then when they were sold they were even more expensive than normal californian houses so richard bloom made money three times over for investing in that property and i now understand and i think it may be a myth that the high-speed rail in california and the map for it somewhat coincides with some of these uh, fires are burning but richard bloom happens to be the person who got the almost $1 billion contract for this high-speed rail. It makes me suspicious seeing that Diane Feinstein is his wife, and she is, of course, a Chinese spy. So I know all these kind of conspiracy theories bounce around out there, and you're, you're, you like to get very specific with what it is that you present. But have you proven that those two particular ones are or are not true? It's a very good question, Douglas. And we have, we, we're still looking at that, by the way, evaluating, you know, by the way, things are still burning. Big tracts of land are still burning. Fires are still out of control. So it's a little premature for us to give a, any kind of a, an authoritative account of how these fires are uh, attacking specific plots of land, either directly related to the hyperrail or di- directly related to other, other, other real estate deals, the kinds of intrigues that you're talking about with Mr. Bloom and Dan Feinstein. Uh, right now, I w- I'll tell you this, our preliminary investigation of it, our preliminary investigation of it is that it's not stacking up. However, it's not over, and it may stack up perfectly when these things have blown through the entire state uh, in another few weeks. Uh, but I'll tell you this, you know, typically, and we, we have followed California, look at, look at the body of work that we publish at all of our websites on just California. There's no other set on the Internet that has done what we've done. No one has come close. So we have, we have held California under a microscope for many years, watching Governor Brown like a hawk since he took office this time around in January of 2011. The point is this. Typically, these fires have been going after the, the rural areas. They're going after the red areas in northern California. They're going after the farm areas which are traditionally more conservative and traditional, and, you know, they, they tend to be more Republican. So what we have seen historically, and, I, and I'm speaking especially during this three-, four-, five-year period where there's an uptick in these wildfires, two every, two every year now. It used to be one season. Now there's two, predictably, every single year. And it really does appear that, uh, at least prior to this current season, that they're going after, they're burning out, they're, they're burning out the conservatives everywhere, any way they can, whether even if it's in a in L.A. County or 
in San Diego area, even in the even in the even in the big urban blue counties and cities, the places that seem to get burned out the most are ruby red Republican for real. You can check it out; it's there. All the evidence is there. This year is different, no question. Malibu is not, you know, Malibu does not fit this pattern. There are other places, by the way, in San Diego, in other places in Northern California that do not fit this pattern. And that's what compelled us to post the letter uh, about um, appealing to the appealing to the, the sensibilities of, of uh, Hollywood and, and uh, Silicon Valley, because now they're apparently they're on the target. They're, 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 they're on the list. And something's changed here, by the way. And I, but there are many, we have many theories for it. I don't want to get into it because it's very complicated. I will say this, that the overarching, the overarching scheme that relates to the UN agendas may be very relevant here, where they're amping up the, uh, the implementation of Agenda 21, uh, Vision 2050, and uh, Agenda 2030 for Sustainable Development. It may be that that's what they are. They are just beca- because of Trump being president and the alienation between the U.S. federal government and the California state government, that they are doing something that they did not plan on doing, except that Trump is in office and they're doing it for a bunch of reasons. Without It's complicated. Can't get into it now. But that overarching umbrella, the U.N. agendas, which is all about... You know, t- remember, the U.N. agenda is not just related to the United States of America. Certainly, the U.S. is a big, big piece of that, of that scheme. We know that. But the whole world is a map that falls under the rubric of the U.N. agendas. The entire world, every square inch of land, every cubic foot of air, and every square yard of ocean, water. It's all, it's all being... Uh, monitored and regulated under the rubric of the UN agenda. So the point is, I mean, look at this, the Middle East. The entire Middle East is up for grabs and being, you know, chewed up in every way possible because of this overarching UN agenda plan. And I don't mean the UN that we hear about in that in that parades uh, every year at the UN headquarters in New York City. I'm not talking about that UN. I'm talking about the governing body that is levels above the the uh, government, what we, what we would call the government, constituted by the General Assembly and the Security Council, I'm talking about three, four, five levels above what you see in New York City. That that agenda, that agenda, uh, which which seeks one thing, it seeks number one a one world government, and the primary purpose of that one world government is to completely regulate and control every square inch of the planet all the water bodies, all the air, and it, it's also meant to control the weather. I mean, meticulously control the weather, the weather patterns, the climate trends throughout the entire planet. That's the ultimate goal, okay, and that's where they want to take it to. And they can only do that with a one-world government in place so that it has uh, uh, authentic enforcement action to carry out, you know, the, the, the punishments for those that, uh, that uh, break the new U.N. law. Well, there's a big leap from where we are now to that point. And, of course, the, the, big, the big piece between here and there is what's known as the North American Union uh, that's, that's basically headquartered in Chicago. Chicago is the headquarters, as you guys know. Chicago is the headquarters for all things wrong with America, with North America, with the entire Western Hemisphere. It all emanates from Chicago. So this is where their headquarters is to just, and I mean to administer, this is their secret headquarters to administer the North American Union. It is a key cog toward the establishment of a one-world government. And what they're doing in California is really just uh, a, what I would, what I would uh, you know, call a, a rather rapid uh, uh, implementation of this, hey, let's see how it works. Let's, this is their laboratory. Let's see what they do here. Let's see what they do there. Let's try this. Let's try that and see how the people react. Problem, solution, reaction. They're using the Hegelian dialectic like a charm. And, and of course, uh, what they do in California is then picked up and they do it in Idaho. They do it in Colorado. They do it in other states that are, that are controllable and uh, have a, a deep state Democrat administration in place, certainly a Democrat governor. 
because they tend to be the quickest to relinquish sovereignty of their state. And, of course, in Jerry Brown, as you know, Jesuit-trained, uh, Georgetown uh, grad, uh, you know, uh, globalist governor like Brown, he, whatever, whatever they tell him to do, he can't, uh, he can't jump off the cliff fast enough. So that's a mouthful, I know. I didn't mean to hit you over the head with so much global, global, you know, no, perspective that's the on answer. this. But you know, America does that first. All, does that all make sense? America first is the answer. Get rid of the globalists. We've been saying this everywhere we look. The globalists have taken over America. And yes, these satellites in space are owned by corporations. At, by dummy corporations, by the way, with dummies running those corporations. And so they could be doing all kinds of things that have no coordination whatsoever with America. And so that's the point, I think, that you've made. We've, you've shown us how, or at least you directed us in the um, direction of finding out that really it's globalists who are doing the geoengineering, and it isn't the military necessarily. It is corporations. And so, again, this could be corporations. And so the inside track of corporations and globalism, we have been pointing out uh, these, these rat lines, these flows of corruption, the way that the money flows, and they, they just simply tax it. So as they're looking at California, I think you're quite right. They've accelerated the UN globalist agenda. So because they see that it's, um, it's fading away under Trump. And so I think you're quite right because we've seen it accelerate so much in the last two years that it, it, it it's brought ac- absolute terror into some people's heart to think that Cal- poor Californians are going through this. But the reality is what you pointed out. We could all go through it. It isn't just California. So thank you for pointing out that if we can get rid of globalism, then we can really uh, put a big uh, dent in this problem. It's a very, very, very important point that you just made, Douglas. And what, what many people don't understand, it's, it's complicated, is that, you know, within each organization, I mean, within the United Nations, for instance, within the U.S. federal government, within Raytheon, within, within the California state government, within all of these entities, there are different factions. And this is where it's, this is where it's really difficult to discern what the heck is going on because you know within just the u.s military you have different factions you have white hats you have black hats you have people in the middle you have people that swing wherever the power is that's where they go and now that's just within the u.s military within each service within the u.s military the u.s army the marines the air force the coast guard you have different factions And then you've got, well, how is the U.S. military configured within the U.S. military industrial complex? And then how is the U.S. military industrial complex configured within the relationship of the British and the American military industrial complex? And so you've got so many different, this is so complex and convoluted. It's difficult to tease out what the overarching agenda is, and uh, not the overarching, what the agendas are at the city, the county, the state, the federal level. The regional level. There's a lot of things going on, and and that's why I have one good friend of mine in California. He's an old Jewish curmudgeon, smartest guy in the block, and uh, he claims he, he's he's convinced that that we are in chaos. That Trump has thrown us into chaos. Not I mean Trump's the pro- Trump presidency has thrown the globalist, the new world order agenda into utter chaos, and therefore you have stuff like the 2018, the two fire seasons of 2018, and the two fire seasons of 2017 being worse than any other fire season in California history. All four of them, all four of those, ever since Trump was, uh, ever since he was elected. So the point is, is that um, there are, it's, it, I don't want to mislead the audience into believing that there are straight lines and it's all black and white and everything's, you know, very easily figure it out. It's not. There are, there's a lot of unknowns here. There are a lot of forces at work. There are power bases that are here and there and everywhere, and those power bases are shifting. Um, and so with that said, you can look at California as a, a very good example of how truly chaotic and confused things are at the very peak of the pinnacle of the pyramid of worldly power. In other words, it's like the snake of 
predatory capitalism is eating its own head right now. Is it eats its own head? Those power brokers and power players at the very peak, they're go- they're, they're they're duking it out. You got factions within the black nobility that are duking it out with other factions within the black nobility. If that makes sense. Oh, oh, absolutely, that makes sense. And you know, so go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to say uh, thank you first off for bringing hope because really, once we get the target and we put the crosshairs on them. It's not that long before somebody pulls the trigger. And as po- people have pointed out, whether it's the Bilderbergers, whether it's the Trilaterals, whether it's the CFR, it doesn't matter. They've all met and they all said the same thing. We're going down. No one's at the controls. Thank heavens Trump came along and at least put America first. And so as the globalists go down, as you're pointing out, through this fantastic chaos, through Trump getting elected, I think we're going to see the opportunity. I think we're going to see the the golden moment that we get to change all of this, and that it may be one of the last moments that we have to change it to recover our republic in this second American revolution, which you have been such a major leader of throughout all this time. And I just, again, want to thank you for not being an anonymous patriot and coming out of the conclave and coming forth and uh, with this second interview, you know, putting yourself out there uh, and who you are and what you're about that's how important this is, folks. This is no joke. This is not a drill. This is the real thing, or else we wouldn't be doing this. Well, I thank you for your, what you and what you folks have been doing there. Uh, what you've done is amazing. In a very short period of time, you covered more ground than we covered in 20 years. So what you've done is really quite amazing. So thank you to you folks for doing an awesome job and a needed job. By the way, just sort of by way of metaphor, you know, it may be that the, the, that the powder keg that California has become may be the powder keg that explodes, that takes down the globalist. And you know how we all laugh here that, you know, every, every time they go after Trump in any way, it always backfires. You know, the Kavanaugh hearings totally backfired. This election theft, our prediction on, you know, the past 10 articles we wrote about the election theft, it's great that they did the election theft because, first of all, they're exposing the completely corrupt and criminal election system that we have in place for many decades. It doesn't work, and it, it, it exposed it so that once and for all, it can be really fixed if, if it goes in that direction. If it doesn't explode the way it's exploding in Florida, then it's not getting anyone's attention, and it'll never be reformed. So just another example of how they just stole every election in sight, the deep state Democrats, in this, our prediction is it's going to come back, it's going to blow back on them in ways they never imagined. So this California powder keg, what they did here in 2018, both fire seasons, we're thinking that this is drawing so much attention. Uh, really, what would have been normally unwanted attention, they're drawing scrutiny like never before, and we're thinking that this may trigger a real... Uh, conversion of the heart for people who sit there in their apathy, in their indifference, in their, in their NIMBY consciousness who really don't care because they wake up one day and they say, oh, my God, my neighborhood could be torched just like the other 50 neighborhoods were torched this fire season. That sends shivers up your spine, and it gets you to do things that you wouldn't ordinarily do, and that's what we need. We need patriots out there doing things, saying things, taking back their power, standing in their own truth, speaking truth to power like they never have before in their life. That's what we need. And when that starts happening en masse, Trump can't do this alone. When he's got a million patriots doing that in a serious way, the whole system collapses in a day and a night, and we start rebuilding the American Republic. 